All is not yet well as regards the planned 774,000 jobs scheme by the federal government as the People's Democratic Party lawmakers and the House of Reps have distanced themselves from the project. They say it is politically motivated. In a statement, the PDP lawmakers caucus led by Kingsley Chinda said the planned projects under the supervision of the Ministry of Labor and Employment is an avenue to siphon the public funds. Joining us to discuss this is Fred Nzako, a legal practitioner, and Ario Dari Atoe, a public affairs analyst, Vafun. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you, for Thank you. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Dari Atoe. Help us break down this scheme. What kind of jobs are these youths expected to be doing? Can you come again? Uh, I'm asking you if you can help us break down the whole scheme. What type of jobs um, are these youths, the several, whole 700,000 uh, plus of them, expected to be doing? I know if I can get you very well, um, because the, the, I know the line is very bad, but you were, you were talking about the, the, the 774,000 jobs the federal government is planning to give. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. C can you yes. kindly help um, switch off your TV set if it's, uh, if it's on? Might be easier to communicate that way. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Okay, let me say, I, I think if I hear you very well, you're talking about the 774,000 jobs and vis-a-vis -vis what's going on in the country. Let me say first that I think the, the disagreement over... The 774,000 jobs is needless. It is needless to the extent that, as a nation, we should actually be looking beyond what that can actually offer us. I know that uh, what is actually causing the disagreement between the Minister of State, Labor and Productivity, and the National Assembly is not really about. Uh, getting their constituents and Nigerians to actually participate. There is an underlying issue which Nigerians are not discussing about that, which is attention to details in terms of data. Now, I don't think there is any data, just like we witnessed during the palliative distribution to Nigerians, I don't think there is any data that is being relied upon to gather, I mean, to gather the, uh, the kind of people that we benefit from right. these jobs too. I'm going to go back uh, quickly to um, Dari Atoe. I, I want to once again get your thoughts on the 700 uh, you know, plus thousand jobs and um, what type of jobs these truly are. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think they, they qualify as many jobs from the, the framework of uh, these job uh, creation. Um, we, I heard that it's going to be for like three months and probably those who will be given these jobs, uh, maybe people will be sweeping uh, marketplaces, streets, taking care of town halls. And I think it's going to be 20, 20,000 naira or thereabout per person for three months. Now, let me let Nigerians to know what is actually the bone of contention. The bone of contention here is that Bulk of this money is going to be misappropriated in the sense that there is no, they are not going to rely on data to distribute this job. They are not going to probably request for back accounts of the people who will be involved. And it's going to be an opportunity for siphoning this money. However, I think what the National Assembly should be doing is to one, investigate what is the ministry. Uh, the parameter the ministry is going to use to get this number of persons who will be benefiting from this job placement. That's number one. Number two is to determine if, I mean, the modalities which, I mean, through which the money will be paid to these people. That's number two. Number three is to also have to determine if there is an empirical data that is available for selecting the people will be participating in this job. So that is, and that, that's what's supposed to be the, the concern of the lobbyists. However, they are more concerned about 
who gets what simply because they know that there is no data that's available. The only solution out of this is to borrow from what we call the yes O scheme, which the federal government is also involved. It's a scheme between the federal government of Nigeria and World Bank. And I can tell you the people in the rural area, the ask, ask for which rural area, which because I have monitored this case before, there is an arena with the bank in which everybody is given an ATM card. So there shouldn't be an no, I mean there shouldn't be no excuse whatsoever on the part of all right. The Ministry of Labor and the people implementing this to tell Nigerians that they cannot use a banking system, you know, to distribute, I mean, to pay the salaries of this group of three months. If anything of such will occur, it's an indication that they're only interested in actually sharing this money All right. and only a few Nigerians we get the money. Okay, I, I want to quickly then go to um, Sir Fred uh, Nzako. I, I want your thoughts on um, a statement by the lawmakers, you know, arguing that the jobs are unsustainable and, of course, cannot cut, uh, tackle the reality of unemployment in the country. Do you agree with this? Do you also feel it's a waste of time with regards trying to sort out our issues with unemployment? In the first instance, I beg to disagree with the use of the nomenclature job. Those things are not jobs. They are, at best, palliatives to 774,000 unemployed people in Nigeria. 20,000 Naira per month that will last for only three months cannot be qualified to be jobs. More so, the minimum wage in Nigeria, statutorily, is 30,000 Naira. So 20,000 is too tough of the minimum wage. So how can anybody qualify such as jobs? It is mere political semantics just to gather and um, appropriate political capital out of the unemployment situation um, in Nigeria. And that is very unfortunate. If government want to be very sincere, government should at best say that they want to give lasting palliatives for three months to 704,000 Nigerians, out of which some of them could um, start some minial, miniature trade. Um, uh, some of them could even be able to open bank accounts with uh, microfinance organizations for them to have um, SME funds as a small-scale entrepreneurs. And that is the best that can be called. It, can, it, it, it beats my imagination. That something that is even below underemployment is described as job creation in Nigeria. It, is, um, it shows the level of sensibilities and the level of understanding in the government circles. And even with that, it is creating unnecessary hula baloo, unnecessary brohaha, unnecessary uh, noise uh, that um, should ordinarily not be seen. It is not the duty of, of parliament to create such jobs, or rather to create such uh, incentives. It is the duty of the executive. And it beats me that parliament is overreaching itself, trying to be a part and parcel of this. If they want to really structure job creation opportunities for Nigeria, that is not the way to go. And then the executive should be allowed to do this this um, palliative for the three months and then off it. Naturally, it is not sustainable because the government has not uh, put down in um, any opportunity or any platform that will make it sustainable. It is a function of sharing money to people. And you and then they asked my colleague there, what nature of job would they be doing? Government by itself has said, these are minor jobs. They sweep the streets, clean the marketplaces, maybe clean the gutters and um, uh, do some miniature, miniature environmental sanitation assignments. And they will be paid 20,000 Naira, which on its own is nothing. And they will only be paid that amount for three months. I think those in leadership should, should have a sense of shame that Nigeria has been reduced to this level that when people are being given such menial, dehumanizing assignment, government will call it job. 
And those who are supposed to create opportunities for employment will even be scrambling to make political capital and political gain out of the terrible unemployment situation that Nigerian population has found itself. I think it is extremely worrisome, shameful, and, oh. um, and very unthinkable. It is something that should have gone seamlessly into the pockets of these people and um, just to encourage them not to commit suicide. Because the rate of suicide in Nigeria has increased as a result of the level of frustration in the system where youths will come out from schools for years on end, they have nothing to do. Oh. They are being told to go and become self-employed without the basic requisite capital for them to take up self-employment. Neither is the education system preparing them. Has, uh, the education system has not prepared them to even be able to succeed in private enterprise. So the, 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 the system has failed in taking care of the youth and care of unemployed. This little palliative that will come to them is being scrambled for. I think it is right. very shameful. And for everybody much, who sir. wants to be a part and parcel of um, making capital or gain whatsoever or, 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 or aggrandizement, political aggrandizement out of this dehumanizing situation, such a person should have a rethink. Nigeria must right. create sustainable job for our team in youth. Frank, uh, that is the only Fred, way rather. their degree of productivity can be reckoned with. Thank you very much, uh, Fred Nzako and Ario Dari Atoye. Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately, but uh, thanks for sharing your sincere thoughts with us and uh, hope, look forward to speaking with you again. Many thanks. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, I'll be giving my take. In December 2019, the Nigerian government revealed plans to recruit 10,000 police officers annually to motivate and enhance the manpower of the Nigerian police force. It may sound commendable, seeing that it will address two critical issues we are currently dealing with as a nation, unemployment and security. But with more than 800 billion naira budgeted for security in 2020 budget and similar figures year after year, according to reports, we are still spending close to 90% of those funds on salaries and less than 15% of those funds on trainings and materials and services. The result of that is our constant struggle with kidnappings, unsolved murders, clashes, and murder of hundreds of Nigerians without any arrests made. It is also important to point out that even with these figures, the budget for security, there are still reports of police officers having to purchase their own uniforms. Have you seen the nearest police barracks in your state? It's not fit to be called the residence of men and women who we entrust our lives and security. It is these factors that have made our security agents set up uh, never-ending roadblocks on our highways and why a serial killer can escape from police custody. It is these inadequacies that have led to the forming of the likes of Amoteco in the southwest. If we can't afford to cater for the number of officers currently employed by the Nigerian government, how can we afford to keep employing more? Ask yourself, how have we truly involved and improved our police force in the last few years? Have they become more tech savvy? How often do we catch suspects with CCTV cameras? How often do we catch suspects with maybe fingerprints in identifying suspects? It is our challenge, really, lack of numbers in the force or poor funding of the force. We can't have better security if we don't do better with technology and training. Adding more and more and more to the payroll of the government isn't going to fix much with regards to security. And that's my take for the program this evening, Plus Politics. It comes up again again uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. I am Osao Gi Ogbonwa.